This is the channel of the Bigwood River in South Central Idaho. Uh, this really unique landscape of sculpted and shaped and polished basalt. Uh, th this section of the Bigwood River uh, channel, which shows up in several places uh, throughout this region here in the Snake River Plain, this is somewhat informally called Black Magic Canyon. And I mean, one of my favorite sections of it, it's a little bit harder to get through. You end up doing a lot more scrambling, but it really nicely shows uh, some of the features here. The geologic story of Black Magic Canyon is that the uh, Bigwood River was flowing across the Snake River Plain uh, for their, you know thousands of years or longer. Uh, and then about 11,000 years ago, an eruption at Black Butte Crater, which is near the, the somewhat famous Shoshone Ice Caves, Uh, that eruption of lava actually filled in the Bigwood River channel and diverted it. So the river was forced to cut a new channel and a new path beginning about 11,000 years ago. And this is that channel. So this canyon and its unique landscape, it's really remarkable that it's formed over the last 11,000 years. Um, we're able to visit this place today because of the current state of things with respect to irrigation and how the water gets used. So as the Bigwood River flows into the Snake River Plain, it gets impounded at Magic Dam uh, behind in, in Magic Reservoir. And then just downstream of there, most years uh, that water gets diverted into canal systems for irrigation. So by doing so, it allows a unique opportunity to come and explore uh, the Bedrock Channel and some of these unique shapes and forms here. Um, you do need to check when the Bigwood uh, canal company is releasing water because you definitely wouldn't want to be down here when they release water from the dam. But generally late summer uh, and fall and winter and even into early spring are good times to come visit this place. And so what I want to do is kind of work my way through here and show you some of the, the unique things here. So as the Bigwood River uh, came down uh, onto the landscape here and started to cut through this lava flow, um, the gravels that the river was carrying turned out they were a lot harder than the basalt, which is plenty hard itself. So basalt, especially this kind of dense basalt here, is usually quite resistant and hard, and it is. But the gravels, if we come down here uh, and look, for example, down in this pothole, we can see there's these rounded gravels. And these gravels tend to be, there's a good one there, um, made of uh, a different rock types. You can see all the white little specks in here. This is a dacite or a volcanic rock from the Chalice Volcanics. These rocks have a lot of quartz in them. So there's some of these, uh, some of the rocks down there have are quartzites or cherts. Um, and these rocks are quite hard. They're actually harder than the basalt itself. So what happens is as the water carries these gravels down, they end up start swirling around in little eddies, vortices, little perturbations in the water as it's flowing and those gravels being dragged around the bottom of the bedrock channel start grinding and, and drilling their way down through the rock, just like a drill bit. Uh, so every time there's water movement and enough velocity, these gravels end up excavating and cutting the channel deeper. And over time, they can excavate big potholes like you see here. This one's still kind of filled in with gravel. Uh, and then eventually the potholes get kind of breached a little bit. If we kind of go up here, you can actually see down into a pothole uh, that has an opening down there. So it's actually breached down on the bottom. There's kind of a little one over there. And we're gonna work our way uh, down the canyon and see what other cool features we can see here. Right now it's kind of got a little bit of a, a mud coating on it. And so it's uh, a little bit slippery, but here's some old manky water that's been sitting here for quite a while. It's been it's been a dry summer, and so I didn't expect to see much water at all in here. But here you can see kind of a little archway where this larger part of the channel I'm standing in, um, and then there's another pothole up above that eventually got eroded through to form that kind of little window there. So what's cool about this landscape and what kind of keeps me coming, me coming back to it year after year is it's always changing. Um, you know, I haven't like really documented everything, but it seems to me just sort of by memory that every year 
this landscape changes a little bit. Here's a really nice, deep, uh, and perfectly circular uh, conical uh, pothole. That one's got a little bit of mud in it, so it's probably quite a bit deeper. And I want to say, I, I came here years ago when my daughter was younger and her friend, uh, and I got a picture of them, and I swear it was this pothole. And at that time, it was even a little bit deeper because I had to help them uh, out of it. But you can see the shapes here. But my point is that every year, this landscape changes a little bit because every time water comes down through it, when there's uh, runoff or seasonal releases from the dam, um, they, you know, as the water comes down, the gravels may fill in spots that were once low. Um, and so it raises it up and makes it higher. And other areas that were filled in with gravel might get scoured out. And so parts that might be shallow and not very impressive one year, you come back the next year and you see a whole new landscape, which is pretty remarkable. Again, some of the cool little windows here. There's one there. Uh, we can kind of pop this into this one here. Uh, and in general, the canyon kind of ranges in depth. Looks like it's kind of shallowing out up here a little bit, but... It, you know, ranges in depth from maybe like 35 to 40 feet at its deepest uh, to basically being more or less on the surface. But again, all these just fantastic shapes. If you're a photographer or kind of into the uh, nature producing art kind of thing, this is a great place to come and just explore and observe these just amazing shapes and forms created by this bedrock erosion. Here's a nice little fin of rock here you know, almost like kind of animal shapes. You can kind of let your imagination go wild a little bit here. Um, and then if we come up where the water gets a little bit shallower, we should be able to see, or where the canyon's shallower, um, places where the basalt's probably a little bit darker and also where we can see some of the the scouring, you can kind of see how polished these surfaces are here. Um, they're polished. This is, you know, when we're out of the channel like here, these rocks probably didn't get blasted with the gravel, but they were sort of blasted with the sand. So the sand that the water carries kind of blasts these rocks when the water's flowing and kind of sandblast them into this really polished uh, surface here. You can actually see the striations showing which way the water flowed as it came through here. And it just polished it into these beautiful, beautiful shapes here. A little patch of poison ivy we'll stay away from. Um, but again, kind of shallowing up here as we look to the south, getting a little deeper there to the north. But this is Black Magic Canyon, one of the most unique landscapes I've seen anywhere, and definitely a real treasure here in south central Idaho.